Hi, I'm Ruthu Gupta. I'm CEO of CAPIT, Cancer Awareness Prevention and Early Detection Trust. With a background of microbiology, I'm going to try and answer a few questions on coronavirus that you all have asked me. Uh, the coronavirus is a family of viruses called coronaviruses. Under the microscope, they look like a crown. The Spanish crown is known as corona, and that is the family of viruses. This is a novel coronavirus. It's a new virus that has been found. Not much is known, so they are still doing research. They expect it to behave like the family of viruses. That's some background they have. And there, is some, there are things that are new about the virus that they are finding out as they go. So whatever information we have, we can share with people, but there is not enough as of now. This virus is not an airborne virus, the way other viruses where you get a viral or you get a cold, you get it from the environment. This is not an airborne virus. It, it comes in the droplets, respiratory tract droplets that an infected person is going to release, which is when you cough, when you sneeze, even when you speak, so with every burst of, um, of speech, you are releasing about 3,000 droplets and one-tenth of them could have the virus in them, depending on the severity of the disease the person is, uh, is chose. So it, because it is in the droplet, it is a heavy virus. It's not airborne. So the droplet comes out of an infected person and will travel a certain distance and then fall onto the surface. They assume that that distance is about one meter, that the aerosol will move. So the point is that you need to keep that one meter distance from, and from anybody because you don't know who is infected at the moment. So you keep a one meter difference and distance and make sure that the aerosol does not come into your respiratory area. Because the aerosol falls on surfaces, you need to make sure that every surface that you come in contact with, you clean substances and definitely clean your hands. Because this is a respiratory disease. It has to enter your respiratory structure to be able to infect you. Right? So it can only reach your mouth through your hands. It can probably go into your nose from if you have been in that area. So if it's in, on your hands and you touch your eyes or your nose or your mouth, you can take the infection. Also, your body has a natural defense mechanism. You have mucus lining in the nose, you have saliva in the mouth. So if you take in the virus, it is usually captured here for a while before it goes into your, uh, it goes into the respiratory tract and then causes an infection. Um, the virus is known, the incubation period is one day to 14 days. An infected person will start showing symptoms from about five days. But if you have a good immunity, you may not show symptoms at all, which doesn't mean that you are not infectious. You are still giving out the germ. You may not show any symptoms. Maybe a little bit of a cough, you will create antibodies and you will get better. But in that time, you have actually spread the germ. And there may be other people around you who are susceptible to the disease. They have some underlying medical conditions. So for, for this particular situation, it is not only about you and your loved ones. It's about everybody. You could get it from anyone. You could give it to anyone. So you've got to make sure that you are taking care. You're being protective. You're being preventive. You're not allowing this to come into your system. You're also not giving it to other people. The only way it enters your system is your hands. So WHO says, Keep that distance. Make sure you are not close to anybody. And make sure your hands are clean. You don't use those hands for your face, any part of your eyes, nose, mouth, which can enter the respiratory tract. So wash your hands continuously. Now, one way to keep away from somebody is to keep a one meter distance. So across the world, this is what is being said that you need to keep this distancing. And the masks are to be used for people who are actually working with infected people are working in hospital health care providers and the others. But in a country like India, if you put it into context, we have such a huge population. We have so much bleed everywhere you go. You cannot ensure that you will have a one meter distance in people. Therefore, if you know you're going to be going out and you know that you might not be able to maintain that one meter distance, it's best to wear a mask. 
yes, it is not a WHO uh, standard uh, advisory, but if you take it into context in India, we should. There is a shortage of masks. You can make your own mask. It needs to be a tightly meshed, pure cotton fabric, preferably. Not the dupatta material or the malmal handkerchiefs, no. You need to have that maybe the, the male handkerchief or some a very solid material, double layered, make your own mask. Make sure the mask is put on the face with no gaps between the face and the mask, completely aligned with the face. Tie it tightly and only touch the mask from the from behind your head. It's assuming that there will be no aerosol at the back of your head. So it, you just that is the only part of the mask you touch. You do not touch the face of the mask. If you're going to continuously put the mask down and wear it up then put it down, what you're doing is whatever the mask has protected you from, you've actually put it on your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands again and again. The most important thing. So there are just these two points, distance from the person and make sure it does not enter your respiratory tract. This aerosol lands on surfaces, multiple types of surfaces. All of them, if you read the the literature and the research so far, they say it stays on surfaces from a few hours to a few days. But there are some organizations like UCLA and things that have done a research and they will tell you that brass and your doorknobs and the chitkani and the locks and things, that kind of material, it stays for about three to four hours. And on paper, cloth, cardboard, it stays for about 24 hours for about a day and on other metal surfaces and glass and things it stays for on plastic it stays for about three to four days therefore all of these things when you come into contact with you have to wash your hands you have to make sure that yes with soap and water you have washed your hands preferable to wash your hands than to use sanitizer but if you cannot all the time wash your hands use a sanitizer you need to wash your hands only when you have come in contact with some material not if you've just been sitting and doing nothing. It's not airborne. It's not going to come to you through the air because you have any substance that has it. It's not, um, the machar is not going to bring it to you. There is no other way it is going to enter your respiratory tract other than your hands. So if there are food items that you have bought and brought them, if there is any, any material from outside that has come, you need to sanitize it once. Soak it in hot water if, it, if that is it. Mallo, se soak it. You don't need to add soap to your... Uh, to your food materials. If you have the vegetable washer, there is a uh, there is a solution that you can use. You can use that for your vegetables, but fruits and vegetables soaked in water well, mallow them with your hand, and then use them if you, and then dry them and put them away. Dry them, definitely. Even when you wash your hands, make sure that you're drying them. Don't leave them wet. And um, keep them away, and then you can use them normally. That is uh, for food items, all of them, whether it is frozen foods or any other food, they come in a packet. That packet at best will have the virus. You need to sanitize it and move it away. Clean your hands before you do anything. Any other food, if you're cooking it, it's going to be done anyway. Your household material, if you were to sanitize it with a regular household cleaner, once a day, that is good enough. You make sure that it is cleaned, which is enough doesn't need to be done uh, more than that and this of course you have a lot of people coming and going if you feel there are too many people coming and going and you it's been exposed to uh, it's been there has been more exposure of certain area of your house you can of course just take a cleaner and do it again otherwise once a day is good your phone though very important um, part of the whole sanitization process because it's on your you use it to your mouth you are the aerosol is on it, you are keeping it on su su surfaces, therefore the phone needs to be clean. And there is there are various uh, videos I think on the net that will tell you how to clean the phone. But basically take off the cover and wash the cover in soap and water. And the phone, it's metal and it is glass. So you can take a microfiber fabric and damp, make it damp, add a little bit of soap to it so that it's just a little damp and soapy and wipe it on your phone. Take a dry fabric and wipe it dry. Dry out the cover, put it back, do that once a day, that's good enough. If you have alcoholic wipes, you can use them and clean your phone. That is something that can carry the germ quite a bit and it comes in contact with your mouth. So it's possible that you could take the germ in with. 
the phone. That is very important. If you go out, make sure you have your mask, make sure you maintain that distance from people. And you are, um, you come home, you wash your hands. And be, like I said earlier, the virus, the body has its own defense mechanism. So the virus will still be in the first level of invasion. It hasn't gone into your respiratory tract. If you come home and blow your nose, if you drink a little bit of warm water, you will have prevented the virus from going into your respiratory tract. Right? So when you drink water, the virus goes into the gut and gets neutralized rather than goes into the windpipe and gets to the lungs where it will, um, where it will create an infection. That is how the virus is structured. Now, from 15th of April or whenever it is that the lockdown opens, it's not like the virus is going to disappear from the country or from the world. It's still going to be there. It still exists. We will start to interact. We will have mates coming home. We will start to go for our walks. We will do all of that. We have to remember prevention and precaution. Not so much that it becomes a hurdle to your living a normal life, but you have to remember these preventions. And there is nothing else than making sure that you do not take the virus into your body, either by direct contact or through your hands, which is the bottom line of everything that needs to be done. Thank you.